Welcome back to our uh, Backcountry Tips. My name is Guy Willett, I'm with Dream Guides. This week we're going to look at some search and rescue equipment and, uh, and how to use it. So what we're really talking about is our, our three most important bits of equipment uh, are the shovel, uh, the probe and uh, avalanche transceiver. And when we talk about search and rescue equipment, we're really talking about um, in the event of an avalanche. So first off, let's look at these shovels. You can see here I've got two types of shovel. The one on the right is a, is a all plastic shovel and the one on the left is, a, is an aluminium shovel. The differences are the plastic shovel is lighter um, but weaker and the aluminium shovel is a little bit heavier but it's much more robust. I think it's important that, actually, that, that people use a, a metal shovel um, because if you try and dig through avalanche debris that is really really set particularly in the spring so you imagine you've had a wet slide uh, and then the avalanche comes to a halt and it's all blocky and solid it's very very hard to actually cut through it with a, with a plastic shovel whereas the metal ones you can actually dig fairly effectively through it so that's actually pretty pretty crucial really in powder it doesn't make much difference but certainly anything that's got a um, a higher moisture content or you know stuff in the spring then a metal one is is pretty crucial and these days these are the ones you're really looking at so how would we use it well first off uh, they normally come detachable so you can have the shovel head uh, and your shovel probe in your rucksack make sure you bring both personally i prefer the ones where the handle is just a single unit rather than a collapsible or extendable version uh, it's just less to go wrong less to deal with in a in an emergency and normally you just have a little button there that you press in so it can slide in and, and click shut and that's it. That's all ready to use. Our second piece of uh, equipment we need to bring with us is our, our probe. We really want it to be at least two metres in length because we want to be searching at least down to two metres depth in the snow. If you have a longer probe, three or three and a half metres, that's also fine uh, and allows you to, to probe deeper in the snow. The only disadvantage being that it's slightly more unwieldy and, and a little bit heavier and a bit more expensive. Personally, I go for around two, two and a half metre length um, avalanche probes. So to use these, to get them set up rather, we just take them out of the bag and we just want to hold our um, the top end, the non-pointy end, and then basically we just throw the remainder of the of the probe out and that'll lengthen it out for us, like so. And then we basically pull the cable by the handle and give it a bit of a waggle. It's not dissimilar to a tent pole. And you'll hear it click, so now it's all ready to use. And when I clicked it, what happened is this little clasp pops out and, uh, and holds it in place. So we just need to make sure that that is in place. And now we're ready, ready to use this as well. Okay, so our, our third piece of equipment is, uh, is our avalanche transceiver, or PEEP or BEEPER. Um, and uh, these, are, these are also super important. Um, I didn't mention these particularly at the start because it's a, you know, it's a common misconception that these are the most important bit of our equipment, but there's good evidence these days that um, unless you have all three bits of equipment and know how to use them in, in the event of a search, then uh, the chances of survival for the victim are massively reduced. So really they're, they're all crucial. So here we have two different types, uh, fundamentally different types of transceiver. The one um, in my left hand is a digital one and the one on the right is essentially an analog one. The analog ones are lighter, their batteries last much longer uh, and they're much cheaper, but they are more difficult to learn how to use. They're, they're just as effective in the right hands, but they are more, uh, more difficult to learn how to use and require more. Uh, practice and, and rehearsal. Um, even as an expert, you, you, you need to spend much more time keeping your skills up to be able to search efficiently with them. Um, much easier to use straight out of the box uh, and with quick reminders is, are the digital ones. So um, for our clients and for our guides and for myself, certainly I prefer using the digital ones because they, uh, they make life easier in the event of a, in the event of a rescue. 
So how do we put these on? Well, essentially all of them will have an on off switch um, and I'll just show you with this one how I would do that because while we're turning it on we also want to check the battery strength, uh, strength so we just switch from off to on makes a beep and we can see it's 82 percent batteries which is just fine and that double beep now shows me that it's transmitting so that's all on and the uh, it's got sufficient batteries the different manufacturers will recommend changing the batteries at different levels. As a rule of thumb, I tend to change the batteries when it's down to about 50%. So that's now on, how do I wear it? Well, I need to wear it underneath my, uh, my top layer, but, uh, but above my base layer. It needs to be accessible if in the event of an emergency, so I don't want it under too many layers, but I need it under at least the outer layer so that it won't get pulled off if I'm caught in an avalanche. How might we use uh, one of our transceivers um, in the event of an emergency in terms of how to, how, to, how to find someone? Well, when we're skiing along then they're all in transmit mode, so they're giving out a signal. So we'll need the, um, the remaining members of the, of the party who are going to be searching or helping with the search to turn their transceivers to search mode. Otherwise when we're searching we'll pick up our, our, our safe colleagues as well. Currently there isn't anyone uh, around with a with a transceiver that's on so it's not picking anything up but essentially I'm going to want to um, split my search into three fundamental parts and the first one is uh, a, a general grid search so I need to identify where the avalanche path is and uh, the last known point of our victim and uh, clearly the, the victim will not be uphill of where he was last seen so we can go immediately to where he was last seen probably mark that point with a ski pole or something similar so we know where we started from and from that point you know we have our, our transceivers in, in search mode and assuming I haven't picked up a signal then I will want to progress down the slope uh, in a grid fashion going to within 20 meters of the sides of the avalanche path or where I feel the, uh, the, the extent of where the victim could be. Once I have and got a signal, then a, a, a digital transceiver will, um, is very helpful because it'll give us a direction and, and a rough distance. And at that point, we can motor really quite quickly along the flux line of the transceiver, as they say, which is a slight curving arc, which is what the transceiver will take us on to get to our victim and uh, we should see the, the distance meter counting down, you know, say from maybe 30 meters to, you know, 25, 20. And once we get to within a few meters of the victim, I'll stop and I'll change my pattern of search again to do a, um, uh, the uh, fine, fine search or a pinpoint search where I'm doing a, a kind of a cross um, search pattern to uh, really narrow down exactly where the victim is. Um, it's important for us to hold our transceiver close to the ground because the, the, the victim is going to be buried under the snow so if the transceiver is reading two meters I could theoretically be standing right above him and he's two meters below me in the snow so there's it's not just a horizontal plane we're searching in it's a vertical one as well okay so we are we're happy that we've established where the victim is using our uh, transceiver um, we now want to uh, physically exactly find him and this is when we when we use the, the probe because with a transceiver we probably narrowed it down to within a meter or two and uh, to save the time uh, digging we'll use the probe um, and as we know the uh, we only have 15 minutes to find all our victims so uh, time is precious so if this is the area that we've located um, our victim in then this is where we'll start probing of course if there's more than one searcher then there's there's no reason why one of the other searchers hasn't already got the probes ready and the shovels ready and, and, and that kind of stuff and they're ready to go immediately. Great, so how do we, how do, we do it? Well, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We're going perpendicular to the slope and straight down and we're really just looking at probing as deep as we can and it can be pretty difficult and this is actually pretty difficult where I am right here because of all the walking we've done on it and that can be the same when we're searching an avalanche debris as well because it can be super solid sort of blocks it makes it difficult but essentially you can feel 
or like here you can see uh, I've actually gone into some mud so that's definitely gone to the bottom and if I haven't found the person on that probe then I'm going to go out in a concentric ever expanding circle with the magic number 20 centimeters um, because I like 20 uh, and it's just easy to remember it's not in there 20 centimeters further this way and probe another 20 centimeters nope another 20 centimeters nope and we keep going round and round until we do till we do find them now if I found him here then I'll leave the probe in where I found him and we'll dig around the probe and that way in the melee of everything we don't uh, we don't forget exactly where where we found him and remember we're looking we're searching for a buried body which has a much bigger surface area than, than the, just the transceiver so um, it, it's it's a pretty realistic you know reasonable realistic thing to find and it does feel different it actually feels similar to turf you know so it's a little bit softer um, and it's not rock hard and it's not really easy uh, and the other thing that we're looking for is not just change of how it feels but also the change in depth so if I've been probing all the way up to two meters and then suddenly I can only get 60 centimeters in then there's that that height difference might be it as well as soon as we've found the person we leave the probe in and, uh, and that's when we'll start digging so how we dig will depend on, on on the steepness of the slope primarily so if it's if it's flat we can just dig in a normal uh, normal manner like we're digging in the garden um, if it's a steeper slope it's often more effective to uh, to dig into the slope um, horizontally or more horizontally so rather than digging down in on top of where the, the victim is going to be we're going to be slightly downhill and digging into the hill and that and the reason for that is it's a it's ergonomically easier to dig that way and also you actually end up digging less snow so it's it, so it's quicker um, and uh, the prime, you know, our, our prime objective is to is to find the victim and make sure that they're breathing. So, um, the most important thing is that that we, you know, we find their their head and that their breathing is um, is our top priority. So this week we looked at the three um, important bits of avalanche safety equipment and how to use them. Um, so hopefully now you can uh, go away and practice with your own equipment and stay safe.